Imagine being able to push some buttons on an alien device and then transforming into one of several characters with extraordinary abilities. That probably sounds like I'm reciting the premise to the hit show Ben 10, but in fact, this is also the plot of a DC comic book that predates it by nearly four decades. Today, we're gonna be talking about the h Child, some of the most powerful objects in the entire DC universe that, like, nobody talks about. But before we jump too far into things, I should probably mention that although they are insanely powerful, the h Childs are some of the most inconsistent things in all of comic books, with the rules and continuities being all over the place. And with a brand new series for Dial H having just come out, they're probably going to change again. Anyway, the H Dial first appeared in House of Mystery number 156 in 1966, but other dials have appeared over time as well. Some of them have buttons that are written in a language called Interlac, some of them only have four buttons that are written in English, and most modern ones literally look like rotary phone dials. But one thing is consistent between all of them. By dialing the code H-E-R-O into an H Dial, its user can turn into a random superhero, complete with name, costume, and those sweet sweet, sweet powers. Now, remember that these are random superheroes, so it's absolutely possible to become a hero that doesn't match your sex. And although it's rare, repeats do happen from time to time. Regardless, this random element opens up a lot of creative possibility and is a comic creator's dream. Almost every single time, the heroes that users turn into are all new creations, with basically no limits as to what their powers can be. If it's a dumb or silly concept, then it's no big deal since it's just a one-off. That's how you get characters like Afterburner, Bumper Carla, and Monster Truck. However, while most of these creations are all new characters, someone using the H dial can turn into established superheroes, such as Plastic Man and even The Flash. Although an H dial is supposed to simply copy the powers of a hero, a broken dial can occasionally straight up steal powers, and some really broken ones straight up steal them every single time. In the case of The Flash, we actually got to see this power theft happen in real time, as his powers were dialed right in the middle of a storyline in the Flash series. Barry Allen was left absolutely powerless until the dialer relinquished the abilities, which meant that he had to rely on his villain's technology that he borrowed from evidence storage. So how does a dialer return back to normal? Well, it depends on the continuity and the dial itself. In most instances, you need to reverse dial O-R-E-H, which is hero spelled backwards, in order to become normal again. Other times, it's a time limit and reverse dialing simply speeds up the timer. Regardless, reverting to human form undoes any damage that's sustained as a hero, and successfully reverse dialing can only be achieved if the transformed hero themselves does it, which means that if an enemy gets their hands on a dial, they can't power their opponent down. Now, if the enemy was able to sever the hand of the user and then use that to reverse dial, it totally works. Now, I'm not sure if breaking a dial while transformed would revert the user back, as to my knowledge, that hasn't happened in the comics. I find it pretty unlikely that we'll ever find out though, since the dials are strong enough to survive a fall from space and are also strong enough to withstand a thermite blast. In earlier continuities, the recharge time before transforming again was random. It could be days, hours, or even seconds. These days, they absolutely need time to recharge, which I personally like as it sort of balances how overpowered these things can be. This way, you can't just keep dialing over and over over again until you get someone as powerful as Superman, which, by the way, is totally possible. Other limitations include how two people can't use the same dial at once, and an H dial only works if you believe yourself to be a hero, although these rules only apply in the modern era. One of my favorite drawbacks comes from the Dial H series in 2012, where the memories of a dialed hero take over the user's mind, and if they're not careful, they can lose all sense of self. These memories can even linger after the user turns back to normal, which takes a massive psychological toll. Now, I'm sure that some of you might be wondering, does the dial do anything else if you type in a different code? Well, one time way back in the day, a dude typed in V-I-L-L-A-I-N into the H dial, which turned him into a random supervillain. Villain. That's neat, but later comics introduced a proper villainous counterpart in the form of the Q dial. Q standing for Qued, which is an old word that means bad. But wait, there's more. 
the later comics introduced a whole slew of other dials. There's the S dial, where if someone types in the code S-I-D-E, they turn into a random sidekick. This comes with the added caveat that when an H dial is in use, an S dial user has to do whatever the hero says. The J dial allows users to jump between worlds, and although it's not revealed what the special code is, I'm willing to wager that it's J-U-M-P. The G dial summons random gadgets and artifacts, the dial tapper copies any H dial in range, and the D dial, also known as the Doom dial, creates a random apocalypse level event. Back to the H dial though. There's a few extra bits of details that makes them somehow even more powerful. One dialer, Chris King, managed to internalize some of his dial's power, and even without it, he involuntarily changes into a new hero every single hour. Thankfully, Star Labs built him a suit to contain these changes though. But let me just one-up that for a second. We've seen another dialer, a guy literally named Hero Cruz, be able to dial specific superpowers by concentrating hard enough. But let's one-up that. The 2012 series showed dialer Nelson Gent be able to cross the wires of his dial and fuse heroes together. But let's one-up that. The 2003 series showed that if someone uses the device for long enough, the powers of their previously dialed heroes come back and become permanent in normal human form. These things are overpowered, inconsistent, and with the new series teasing the idea of the Heroverse, I think that there's a chance that these could be even more OP, but I guess we're just gonna have to wait and see. This was a nightmare to research, but I actually had a lot of fun because those old Silver Age stories ended up being surprisingly enjoyable. But one thing that I really did like was the 2003 run that I mentioned earlier on in the video. It was kind of like a monkey's paw story where the H styles would come into the possession of characters, they would get insanely powerful, and then their lives would be destroyed in just interesting ways before the dial then gets moved over to somebody else for the entire process to repeat again. So if that sounds interesting, then definitely give that a read. I honestly enjoyed it. But before we go, I want to give a quick shout out to at Xeno underscore Odyssey J for retweeting my last video. It means a whole lot. And if you want a shout out, this might be a recurring thing, maybe retweet this video. Twitter, at Trailer Drake. But if you like this video, then why not consider subscribing or even watching another one? And if you like this, you probably like obscure DC Comics trivia. So why not watch the video that I did with my friend Billiam on the DC Comics Bionicle books? It's weird, so I don't know, give that a click or something. But anyway, I hope you learned at least a little something new, and hopefully, I'll see you next time.